Hey witches, welcome back to the channel. Once again, this is Hectarios, Witch of the Realms. And we're going to be doing our reading for the summer solstice, midsummer, um, full moon as well. So as you can see this week here, there's a lot going on. We had the summer solstice on the 21st. Um, the full moon is on the 24th, and so is Midsummer Day. So, a lot of energy going on right now. I feel like this whole week is just surrounded with this energy. So, you know, the sun's energy, right? A beautiful energy. So, that's, and by the way, that's the Witch's Almanac. Okay, so um, let's get into what I'm feeling psychically. This energy has been illuminating, I'll say it like that, right? Because I feel um, a lot of things have been coming to the surface. I've been doing a lot of shadow work lately. Um, I've been doing a lot of self-reflection. We also just came out of Mercury retrograde, so I was doing a lot of introspective um, healing and shadow work uh, and confronting myself to a large degree. Um, you know, but with this energy, I feel like things... I do feel a very cleansing energy with this because it is through um, revealing the truth or illuminating things that we can heal. We can, um, it's all about our, our awareness and raising our consciousness, right? Because what we do is we become aware of things and in so doing that we um, gain control over it to a certain degree or we um, free ourselves of, you know, certain negative things and patterns and things like that through becoming aware of them. Okay, so I'm feeling a lot of cleansing energy with this, but I'm also feeling um, also this energy that's like pushing me towards growth and um, it almost feels as though, I don't know, it just feels like I'm being lovingly pushed towards um, growth in my life and on my path. Hopefully you guys are all feeling that as well during this time. Um, but a, lar a large part of that has to do with um, cleansing and releasing things from the past, releasing past traumas and things like that healing, a lot of healing and cleansing, and letting go of the past. And then uh, using that space that has not been created and pushing forward with that. So that's basically what I'm feeling psychically and with the energies. So for this reading, I'll be using the Star Spinner Tarot once again. Probably my new favorite deck. Um, and I will also be doing a Fairy Oracle card this time as well. So we're just going to go ahead and start getting into that. <clears throat> and I have been feeling the fairies around a lot more lately in my life um as i mentioned in my fairy update video i've been feeling their presence around me a lot stronger along with goddess diana so i feel like the fairy's oracle will be a good thing to use now so let's give this a shuffle A 
I love the back of these cards. Now I align myself with the Most High God and the Holy Spirit, Hecate. Please communicate the truth to me through these cards so that I may be guided for the highest good of all. Thank you and salute it be. Please give us your divine guidance for this week of the summer solstice, midsummer, and the full moon. So that we can use the energies for our highest good, greatest success, and joy. Anything that we need to know or do at this time, please communicate it to us now. Thank you, and Samoda. So I'm going to pull three cards for this. Okay, we have the Ten of Coins, the Hierophant, and the Two of Coins. So, coin energy, masculine energy with the Hierophant. Um, I kind of feel a lot of masculine energy just with the suit of coins and it's... Um, energy as well or maybe it just feels that way to me now but I'm getting a lot of strong masculine energy off maybe just this spread I should say but that makes sense with the Sun um, and all of that so the ten of coins this is an energy of protection of tradition family heritage culture uh, community. It's really an energy of community. The protection of being part of a community. That is the energy of this card summarized into one sentence. Um, there's some community that you're a part of that offers you protection, support, love, companionship, peace, joy, all of that. There's a perfect community for you out there, whether if you found it or not yet. It's there. Or maybe it's there and you just don't recognize it. You just haven't noticed it for what it is. That's what this card is. It's what it's talking about. It's what it's um, highlighting right now for you, for all of us. And I feel like in this spread, it just wants us to recognize that. I love how the dog and the old man are sitting here. And they're just looking at each other and they just know an unspoken thing and maybe it's because it's an unspoken thing that maybe you don't you just don't recognize it for what it is but this card is asking us to recognize and acknowledge that now okay then we have the Hierophant and this is also a card of tradition. It's a card of structure. Um, so is this one, you know, the Ten of Coins. It's very much about foundations and structure that we build upon, right? Um, with the Hierophant, it is sort of the, uh, the foundations of the past, the structure of the past, the support of tradition or some other kind of uh, status quo of something that's going on or something that is so when the Hierophant shows up it's basically to let us know like acknowledge that be aware of it embrace it but 
but with the Hierophant, there's also a message of leadership. There's an energy of leadership and of sort of guiding others. Because that's what it's there for. That foundation, that tradition, that structure. It is almost there to be as a guide to us. And um, that sort of thing. The next card is the two of coins and this is about um, balance bringing yourself into balance with certain things and with different areas of your life I feel when I look at all of these cards together I feel like the cards are telling us to take a look at our lives, take a look at our communities, at our families, um, our relationships with other people, at our society. Take a look at these things and um, see if we maybe need to be putting more attention into it or giving it more attention, acknowledging it for what it is. Um, bringing balance by putting energy into it if you have been lacking to do so okay that's what this card is um this one of the meanings of this card is bringing balance to areas of our lives that are not in balance right now so whatever that is for you personally may be different than just what i'm saying here but uh with the way that these cards are, I feel like the main thing that it's telling us to bring balance to is to our communities, whatever that is for each of us. Putting more energy into it, putting more attention to it than maybe we have been. And I know also too, this is sort of a thing to do with timing of everything that's going on in the world right now because we're also coming to the ending days of um, COVID restrictions and isolations and all of that. Um, we've sort of been in the process for a while now, but we're really coming to the end of this whole isolation time. And so it's almost like uh, this reading is kind of saying right now we need to start putting more time into social interactions and connecting with others and things like that i feel like that's a large part of what this is saying i don't think anything else is coming to mind with that right now but that's a lot to think about okay just as it is i also feel like this is this is what's being supported right now so if you do try to bring balance to your life um, and to these different areas of your life right now it will be greatly supported by the cosmic energies so that's gonna do it for the tarot cards okay let's see if the fairy oracle will give any more insight into exactly what this is all about. Now we call out to the fairies. All of you different beings. Please come forward now and communicate the truth to us through these cards. Help us to use the energies for our highest good, greatest success and joy. What messages can you come forward with and give us now for this week of the summer solstice and the full moon and midsummer's day? Please give us your divine guidance now. Thank you and so much. Okay, so we have, <laughs> that was so funny. We have this card here, 
I believe it's called Gluminous Doom. Number 56, very oracle card. Look at that sad little creature. Can y'all see that properly? Alexa, lamp white. Okay. Okay, can you guys see that? He looks so sad. Gloomy. Okay. I automatically feel like this is tied into what I was saying at the beginning of this. Um, being called to do that healing work, basically. Being called to do cleansing right now. I feel like that's what this card is. I already can tell that that's what this card is about, right? So let's see what it has to say. Number 56. Yes, Gluminous Doom. Keywords are self-defeat, self-pity, self-destruction, but also taking care of ourselves. Okay, when we look at Gluminous Doom, it is easy to um, pity him or feel sorry for him just based off how he looks, right? Gluminous Doom is ready and willing to help us explore just how awful it all feels. Just how bad it is and, and what has made us feel like that in the first place. It is very important to really get to know these feelings or how can you possibly let them go if you don't fully acknowledge and understand where it's coming from in the first place. If we don't, we end up just tucking them away and hiding them from sight. Until they appear again, maybe in a different guise. So actually, this has a lot to do with something that I was talking about on a Facebook post. And a post here on my YouTube community and on Twitter and Instagram. I posted it everywhere. About, um, you know, our... Our comfort isn't always our peace. Sort of the walls that we build up around ourselves due to past trauma and things like that can end up becoming a cage that we have put ourselves in because we limit ourselves from moving beyond that. Getting out of our comfort zone, so to speak. Okay. Breaking free of sort of past traumas and things that have limited our behavior and our um, self-belief and our true will. Okay, this is what this card is talking about here too. It's talking about cleansing yourself of that energy, whatever that is for you. Gluminous doom helps us properly explore our gloomy feelings of doom so that we can be done with them. It is a very important job. So this is the card of shadow work. Or one of them at least. The ultimate test here of course is to take responsibility for ourselves and our attitudes and to choose a path that is life affirming, not life denying. So that's exactly what I was just saying. There's a lot of things that um, we go through, like I said, traumas and pains of the past, whatever it is, that ends up changing us to a deep degree. The harm of the past lingers with us, whether we acknowledge it or realize it or not. It becomes a part of who we are and it controls us. It becomes a cage. It becomes self-limiting beliefs. It becomes self-doubt. It becomes distrust of other people. Um, the, it becomes the unwillingness to try certain things or to trust certain people. Okay? That type of thing. All of that, it becomes ingrained in us. So Gluminous Doom is here to say, you need to look at those things. 
you need to look at your um, your behavior patterns, your cycles, your daily routines, your choices, and how all of that is affected by this darkness that's inside of you. And you need to heal that. It's time to heal all of that. And stop letting it control you. Right? Stop letting it limit you on living the life that you truly want. Or that you have denied yourself because of these things, right? It is time to face the fact that our attitudes and beliefs about ourselves are our own. We may have learned them from others, but the others are not responsible for them in the here and now. We are. If we choose self-pity and pessimism, we make a choice that makes our lives worse. When this card appears in a reading, it indicates that it is time when understanding that concept is especially important. A time when there is some sort of a crunch in the situation that offers someone the opportunity to notice and change such self-destructive habits. It is yourself. You know what you need to do. If it is someone else, you may wish to consider how you might support them in this opportunity for change. Can you make sure to give positive feedback at every appropriate opportunity? Can you refrain from nagging and scolding or complaining at them when they get it wrong? These things do help. So that's something else to consider. So that's all this fairy has to say. Ew. <laughs> this, the soul shrinker was on the bottom of the deck. <laughs> I was just like, ew, let's look at its face. What's actually funny is this card comes right before Gluminous Doom in this deck. So, that's interesting. Um, but yeah. Cleansing, shadow work, confronting ourselves. But yeah, um, shadow work, cleansing work, confronting ourselves. Um, seeing seeing deeper into why we do or don't do certain things and allowing ourselves to if necessary heal and break free of cycles and patterns that we find ourselves in and move into something better okay move into something that's more in alignment with your true will for yourself so that's what gloom and doom is here to teach and that's going to be all for this reading um i hope that you found it helpful as always and i hope that you will take the messages and apply them where they fit in your life and have a lot of healing and um reignite your hopefulness for your future as well so until next time as always hell to the witches hell hecate hell to the fairies and blessed be